Hello everybody. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most crucial question types that will be featured in your IGCSC Edexcel biology paper. This is known as the design of an investigation, also known as the Corms question. Now, this type of question will always feature in paper one, so both double and triple students will need to learn how to answer it. The reason this question is so crucial is because it differs from the usual question type in biology requiring you to properly look at the question given instead of using your prior knowledge to aid in obtaining your answer. To help you guys get a better understanding of how to structure an answer to this question, let's look at an example from an old past paper. Plant growth substances stimulate root growth from a cut stem. Describe an investigation to find the best concentration of plant growth substance to stimulate root growth. You should include experimental details in your answer and write in full sentences. And this is for six marks. Now at first glance, this question may seem slightly intimidating. A practical regarding plant growth substance wasn't listed anywhere in the syllabus. So how is it being examined? Well, to keep it simple, it's being examined because we need to know nothing about plant growth substance to actually answer the question. Like I stated earlier, this is the nature of most Corm's questions. You'll have no prior knowledge about the topic of the Corm's question. However, just from the information we have in the question, we have enough information to get all six marks for our answer. We just need to learn how to structure it. And that's where the abbreviation CORMS comes in. So we'll go through each letter in order, and let's start with C, which stands for change. This looks at what we're intentionally changing in the investigation. Another name of this would be the independent variable. Let's look at our example to see what we have to change. Well, we are finding the best concentration of plant growth substance to stimulate root growth. Therefore, our change will be the concentration of plant growth substance, as that's what we need to alter in order to find out which one is the best. Next up, we have O, standing for organism. Now, for organism, what we have to do is identify the organism in the experiment and state a control for it. Now, this may be a bit confusing, so to make it easier to understand, Let's have a look at our example question. For example, our organism is a plant because we're testing root growth. A control we can use for the plant is using the same species of plant for the investigation. Now, as a small side note, something that I may have forgotten to mention is that due to the nature of Corm's questions, in sections such as organism, you can often find a multitude of answers in the mark scheme that would all score you marks. And while our previous answer was correct, I think it's important that you familiarize yourself with some other possible answers. So these would all score you marks as well. Using the same exact plant for the experiment, using the same type of plant, using the same aged plant, and using the same sized plant. After that we have R, standing for repeat. This is a relatively simple stage, where all you have to do is state to repeat the investigation for a number of times. At IGCSE, Repeating the experiment three times is generally a consistent number to use, but you must to ensure that you're stating how many times you want to repeat the experiment. Now for M. M stands for measurement. We have to state what we are measuring in the investigation. This is also known as the dependent variable. For example, we need to look closely at the question. We are investigating the best concentration of plant hormone to stimulate root growth. So therefore, we need to measure root growth. But we can't just say measure root growth, as we need to give something with quantifiable units. This is where you have to use your application skills and apply a suitable measure for the investigation. In this case, a suitable determinant of root growth may be the number of roots present, or even the length of roots. For our other M, it is another measurement. However, the second measurement is far easier to write about. The second measurement is to do with the time duration of the experiment. We need to give a suitable time for the investigation to be carried out. Let's have a look at our example. We need enough time for the roots to actually grow. So something like 30 minutes is far too little time. A more reasonable choice would be a time period of one day, which would allow enough time for the roots to actually grow, giving us actual data, and this would get us a mark. If you guys are stressed about getting the precise time, in the mark schemes, 99% of the time, the range is pretty large for this time duration, so as long as you list something realistic in your answer, you should be fine. 
Now for our two S's at the end. These both stand for same. Same refers to the variables of the experiment that we do not intend to change, in order to ensure that the experiment being done is fair. These are also known as the control variables. Here, we need to use our application skills and identify two suitable control variables that we can use to apply to the investigation. One that we can use is keeping the same temperature. This is due to the fact that we're measuring root growth, and temperature has an effect on enzyme activity, which may, in turn, affect the root growth inadvertently. So, we can say that we want to keep the temperature constant. Another control variable we can use is ensuring the plants have the same availability of water. Once again, we are measuring root growth, so if the plants have different availabilities of water, it may affect how much the root actually grows in the given time period. Now, for these variables, there are very many options that we can pick. For this experiment, I'll leave a few on the screen from the mark scheme. But just remember, there's a broad range of control variables, so you should be able to accurately get two marks from this part most of the time. And just like that, we are done. That is it. That is the extent of Chrome's questions. Now, while I hope my explanation was up to par for you guys to get a basic and good understanding of the topic, the best way to ensure you'll get six out of six marks all the time is to do a couple past papers of your own. Really, it, Quorum's questions are a free six marks if you practice enough, and they're really easy to master. So I really hope you guys take the time to do some past papers, use your teacher's resources, and really master this question, because it will just hand you over a free six marks in your biology paper one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching.